How's it going, everybody? Brian Elvis and Dave Meltzer here, Wrestling Observer Radio. It is June 27, 2022, figure four on the dot com slash wrestling observer dot com. We've got a lot of news to get into today, stemming from the AEW New Japan Forbidden Door pay per view, which is in the books. And the two big stories coming out of the show, and there were many stories, but the two big stories are number one, the injury to Adam Cole suffered what is believed to be a concussion in the IWGP title match which led to a very weird finish, which we'll get into. And we don't really have an update other than that. He's being checked out, and hopefully he'll get a lot of time off to heal up because he's had a lot of injuries over the last several months, and he's certainly not the only one in AEW dealing with Man, injuries. The place is lot, there's so many injuries. They need, to, they need to address this in some form and uh, because there's just too many guys going down. Um, I mean, it's interesting, too, because somebody who's a sports guy um, actually sent me a message and just goes like, you do realize that they've been doing the same thing for two and a half years. And while there's always been injuries, it's never been like this. And, you know, they've, been, they've always been going hard. And, um, you know, and maybe it's always been too dangerous and everything like that. And there, there have been a lot. But, um, you know, he sort of said it's like one of those weird things in sports where just a team will get a ton of injuries at one point, and it's not like they're doing anything different than they did any, any other year where they didn't have the injuries. So that's a theory behind it. But, man, there's a lot of injuries, and I still think that uh, they need to, you know, it's just too many. You know, I mean, there's the ones that we know, and there's the ones that we don't know, but it's just, man, it's just so many. And obviously the other story is that John Moxley beat Hiroshi Tanahashi to win the uh, AEW interim title. So Moxley won and uh, capped off what was a great in-ring pay-per-view. Just a pretty much fantastic show from top to bottom. And, one of, one of the, uh, all-time great show, I thought. Yeah, yeah. So um, uh, Mo Moxley, yes. Moxley mentioned in a post-match interview, you know, he was covered with blood, and he said he might have been concussed too, which hopefully that's not the case because that's the last thing they need is, an, is another concussion, especially leading into this uh you know, Wednesday's blood and guts because Mox is obviously a key part of that match. But um, and I don't know, you know, he <clears throat> excuse me. He did say that <clears throat> off the air, I think, when they were doing the, uh, you know, when uh, Tony Khan came out with a uh, negative one and um, just kind of like did the, the victory lap, so to speak. It's really interesting because there was so much negativity in the days leading into the show because of all the changes in the card and, um, you know, the. The, the secondary market collapsing and things like that and you know all these things about how you know nobody knows these guys and it's weird because the a lot of people don't know you know the new japan guys for sure okay but like on a wednesday night when when okada's music played the first time you heard like the the coin drop the place went nuts and that's milwaukee wisconsin and, and it's um you know what I mean? And it's not your flying audience. That's just people in Milwaukee. And I noticed that in other cities, certain New Japan guys, when they like Suzuki, um, when they come out, you know, do get a big reaction no matter what. Um, so there is an awareness of it. And obviously, these people bought tickets for it. But it's still, you know, this was their this was the second biggest crowd that the company ever had. And um, you know, the, the New Japan guys were, I think, you know, I mean, Claudio was really old, you know, got a really, really big reaction because it was the surprise, even though it was very clear that most of the people expected him in that spot. But really, I mean, I, I my sense was that the New Japan guys, um, like Suzuki and Okada, um, as much as were probably about as over as, as you know, and, and Tanahashi got cheered in certain, and he got cheered over Moxley at the end of the match. So, it's it's not like the people don't know at least the top guys whether it translates to pay-per-view that's the unanswered question and obviously with tv ratings it, it didn't translate to tv ratings so people who say like oh you know they're not going to help draw ratings well that's true um it's they, they 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 absolutely led to a lot of tickets being sold uh they did not lead to ratings increase and as far as pay-per-view goes you know, we'll know the answer in a couple of days. But as far as show quality goes, you know, I mean, if this show is any example, they need to do one of these every year. 
Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of different factors here. I mean, if you're talking about the live ticket sales before there's even a card announced, they sell that many tickets. I mean, clearly this is an audience that they want an opportunity to see the biggest New Japan stars on a show with the AW guys here in this country. So right. They're and, gonna... and, and, and keep keep in mind that, that New Japan had just run a show in Chicago, whatever it was, like just, just recently. Uh, and, 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 you know, it didn't have all the top guys on, but it had a lot of them. And so it's not like this is the first time these guys have ever been to Chicago. So um, it was it wasn't just the novelty of New Japan because uh, but it was the idea of New Japan and AEW together with a giant show is what sure. sold all those tickets. And I then in, in, in terms of TV, it, it's a TV is a different thing. I mean, if you're yep. If you're willing to watch TV, that's one thing. If you're willing to buy a ticket to a TV taping, you're going to be a little more hardcore. Sure. So I'm not surprised that you're going to see people in the television audience knowing who everybody is. And honestly, like, you know, as far as, as do we do that, does the audience know these guys? Well, no, they don't at this point. There's a, there's a portion of the television audience, and this is their very first introduction to the New Japan guys. And if you think about the relationship and how there's probably going to be a forbidden door next year and how probably leading to that forbidden door, you're going to occasionally be seeing New Japan guys on AEW television. I think that next year's build to forbidden door, you'll hear a lot less of, well, we don't know who this person, we don't know who this person is. You're going to probably see a fair number of New Japan guys between now and next year. This first year was almost like an aberration because the relationship had been so cold for so long and then it opened up and now all of a sudden we've got to book this show and in four weeks we got to rapidly introduce and i think tony said like we didn't even know we were gonna have okada until a week ago we didn't know we were gonna have i forget the other guy that he said shingo takagi maybe it, it, no it was somebody else it was like a big name but he goes we didn't know about that person until two weeks ago yeah. so you know it, then it's rushing to introduce people on the last episode but also, at the end of the day, if you looked at the card yesterday, no matter what you think about the build or the TV or the angles or the injuries or who knew who, I mean, you could look at that lineup and it was pretty clear that this was not going to be a bad show. It was going to be a great show. And I think I, it was I, probably I, even greater than I expected it to be. I think it over-delivered. As good as that lineup looked on paper, because, I mean, like... like I knew, you know, like, look, Will Ospreay and Orange Cassidy, you knew were going to have a great match. But I thought that that match was far greater than my expectations were for that match. The opener, the Jericho match, I mean, I, look, I knew that was going to be a really good match, but I thought that match was phenomenal. And up and down the card, I would say um, most matches over-delivered. Um, and n there was probably not one match... Maybe the IWGP title because of the finish, but the the actual wrestling in that match was phenomenal. The finish, obviously, shit happens, right? And and that can happen. Um, but if you take that out of the the equation, um, what they were doing, I mean, Adam Page was freaking great. Um, you know, Okada, you know, is Okada. I mean, it's not like it's not like he was the focal point and all that. Jay was was great at being Jay White. Adam Cole was great. You know, it's just but but the. Um, yeah, you know, I mean, shit happened at the finish, and and it wasn't, but but you know, I mean, like everything else, I mean, I just thought, man, it, it was like one great match after another. The freaking all, all Atlantic final, you know, I mean, I kind of figured, okay, sh so showed it Umino in that six man tag, which is out of this world, and that one I didn't expect. The Clark Connors, it was funny because I knew they, you know, obviously he was going to do the job. I didn't, I was surprised it was Pac, and I'm glad it, it is because. I know when I was thinking about that thing, I think most people thought Miro was going to win or, or Black. And I I thought, like, let's, you know, the, the TNT title is not the super workers title. Not that not that you, you know, I mean, but but for this title to have some sort of a thing, put it on pack because it's like that guy, you know, is 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 so underrated. But he is an absolutely incredible wrestler who, if anyone is just even like marginally good. He can go in there and have a great match with them. And and I, I, you know, I'm not a fan of of adding that championship. But if since it's already done, putting it on Pac, I think, was, was a, a great idea. Hey, if you're a big fan of Wrestling Observer Radio, we got 12,000 episodes of all of our podcasts up at our website, WrestlingObserver.com. If you sign up today, you get access to every single one of them. 
the 12 to 18 new shows that we do every single week. You can podcast them, listen to them on the road, at work, working out, in the shower, wherever you listen to your podcasts. And also full access to the Wrestling Observer newsletter and archives. So if you love what you hear, head to WrestlingObserver.com. 12,000 audio shows at your fingertips.